And one more piece of information you're going to need to read this Ruth Currier combination is how to get rid of a hold sign. Here I am standing in first position and count two, holding on both feet. Count three, I want to go into the air as I want to land on count four. But I've got to get rid of that hold sign because this is saying, look, you're holding. Don't move. Your supports are staying still. To cancel a hold sign and go into the air, very simple device, very neat little device. You put what are called action strokes, sometimes they're called air lines, in the leg columns. It means the legs are free of the ground. When you see air lines, they cancel that hold sign and enable you to go up into the air. Marcelo? They're called, in general, they're called action strokes call action strokes because sometimes in a choreography you'll be walking forward say and the choreographer might want you to move your right arm on count one and your left arm on count three the choreographer doesn't care what you do with them right so in general a line is called an action stroke it means that part of the body is moving but in a non-specific way when they're used with to cancel a hold sign like this in order to go into the air And specifically, they're called air lines. It means the same, both legs are in the air. They're not doing a particular movement. They've just, they're gesturing. A non-specific gesture. If it were very important that you do something specific in a score, suppose you want to jump, but when you jump, you want to go like this. You want to go. So what would you have to say when you're in, your, in the air? Where are your legs? Yes, good, 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 good. So if it's important that you be, do something specific, you, phys you actually do a gesture, do something exciting, then that's what you'll see, that your legs are not just releasing from the floor, they're gesturing to the sides. So this is a way of writing a very specific jump, opening the legs in second as you're in the air. But if you don't want the dancer to do that, you just want the legs to gesture, in other words, come off the floor, then you would see the air lines. Right, so it means that a leg gesture also counts as a whole sign. Yes, good. Right, and that if, if you don't have an action stroke there, means... You stay there. Okay. What about this? What might this mean? <laughs> I'm getting tricky here. What do you think this means? This leg. Right, the left leg's coming off the floor, that's all it says, it's gesturing. But the right leg specifically has to open to the side. So you're gonna get a movement where only one leg is doing something that's specified. Okay, all right, Ruth Currier, here we go. Who is Ruth Currier? Good, she danced, she was a principal dancer Right, with Doris Humphrey and Jose Limon. She's still active as a teacher, a very wonderful teacher. And as you're learning some of her work, I want you to think if there's any similarity you see between what we've done of Limon and this. All right, I'm looking at the basic combination, which is the first one. How many beats in the first measure? Four. How many beats in the second measure? Three. So we're doing a combination seven counts. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. Look at this strange repeat sign you have here. It's not a standard repeat sign. It has a wavy line under it. Anybody know? Yeah, it's meant to miss everyone. All right. This wavy line is called an ad lib line. Ad lib. It means you are at liberty to keep going. The way this is set up on the staff, you start walking forward in releve and then ad lib. So you're at liberty to keep going. At no particular timing, nobody's saying it has to be one, two, three, four. You're just at liberty to keep going.
right? Ad lib. In a repeat sign, what's it mean? <laughs> Do it as many times as you want. Okay. So you're, you're not uh, told how many times to do it, you just do it as many times as you like. Look at the end of measure one. In count three, how many feet are you standing on? Okay, standing on one foot, you're standing on the right foot in count three. Yes? All right. Then we have an airline and a leg gesture. Count one of the next measure, how many feet have you landed on? Two. So this is a picture of a, an assemblé. In the second measure, you also have some air work, because in count two, you've got a gap in the support column. Taking off from two feet, landing on one. So this is a sison. So the whole combination is going to alternate assemblé with sison. Take it out on the floor, see how you do with it. Why are there foot hooks on that, that leg gesture in measure one? Well said, in a perfectly wonderful Australian way. The, as Kathleen says, the leg is going to swish forward. The, the foot hooks in the first measure make sure that that is a brush of the leg, so that you don't just lift it this way, right? That it brushes through and helps propel you off the floor. That's it. Good, Rivka. That's it. Well done. Yes. All right, let's listen to the music for this, please, David. It'll give them an inkling of what they're headed for. And check your stage facing. Some of you haven't seen your starting facing. Ready? Three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Good. Okay. Two at a time, please. Let's rewind, David, so we give them plenty of music. And where are your arms? Yes. <laughs> they're, they're, all hang, they're all hanging on down arms. Any X on them? No. All right, so you don't want to round them this way. They're straight arms. Does that jive with this combination at all? have linear arms? Does that make sense compositionally? Because of the, you've got a, a, a mid-level batma and then a mid-level arabesque, right? So it's extremely linear. All right, so you want to make sure that there's no uh, sort of flopping around and that the straightness of the arms enhances the general look of the combination. Right. How about the other side? Correct starting position, please. Ready? And give it to you one more time. Make sure that you're in motion on the one. Sometimes you're a little bit behind the music. Ready? And should both leg gestures be? I'm not asking to see them now, but ideally, yes, at mid-level. So that this is what I'm saying about the arms. The arms are straight down, and that first leg gesture is at mid-level. What's that give you in terms of your assemblé? It gives you a shape in the air. It's not just a generalized assemblé with a low leg, right? The leg's at, at mid-level. It's a nice shape in the air. And when you land, what have you got in terms of this shape? When you land, you have the opposite. You have the reverse of it, right? Because you have the back leg in arabesque is also in mid-level, right? So those shapes, I have a feeling, are important. Otherwise, we'd have low-level leg gestures there. 
All right, so I'm going to ask you the last time, and, and we haven't had a dance class, so I'm not asking you to do anything that will injure you, but you might want to try to at least clear that in your mind as you do it, that that is what you would be looking for, are those two shapes in the air. Ready? And two, three, four, five, six, seven.